So, um, for those of you who are not familiar with the UH Coastal Center, I would like to introduce it to you, tell you a little bit of what our hopes are for restoration there and a little bit of ongoing activity and maybe there's opportunities for us to partner together. So the, uh, the Coastal Center is also the Texas Institute for Coastal Prairie Research and Education and I'll say a bit about that in a minute. It's located a little bit south of us on the other side of I-45 um, with uh, it's the west end of the city of Lamarck, uh, right next to the dog track where Jaime and I have spent many long afternoons um, watching the greyhounds run. And uh, um, here's what it looks like now. And you can see there's some lighter area down the middle that's uh, grassland and a lot of darker area that's forested at the, at the moment. The property is a little bit more than 900 acres. The history of the site is that during World War II it was Camp Wallace, a uh, military base, and uh, was used for a variety of purposes. Uh, there was a lot of housing on the site. There was the parade ground and people marching around and uh, um, so it wasn't uh, farmland, but it was uh, utilized. And here's the oldest image from Google Earth from 1969. And what you can see is that 20 years or so after the military abandoned the site, the, the main center area and a lot of the area on the west is still uh, grassland. But on the east side, you see a lot of trees starting to come in. This is where most of the buildings were, and people like to plant trees and shrubs around buildings. And so presumably that's because a lot of things were planted and, and got started there. Camp Wallace extended to the south, and so uh, part of what was Camp Wallace is now Jack Brooks Park, which is our neighbor to the south, and the county landfill is to the uh, west. Um, and so the University of Houston runs it now. And uh, last year, the Texas legislature designated the site as the Texas Institute of Coastal Prairie Research and Education. The logic for this is we're sort of unique in combining a very high quality prairie site with academic researchers and higher education. So a lot of you guys work at sites that are bigger prairies than we have by far. Um, but don't necessarily have the, the uh, same academic um, input. Here's a little bit of what's going on. So there's a, a small laboratory building, a smaller concrete building that's a storage area. There's a pole barn greenhouse. There are deep wells for geophysical research. There's infrastructure uh, following the movement of the earth here with uh, uh, high resolution GPS units. We've got a large uh, experiment here in the main prairie looking at uh, how nutrients affect both the plants and the insect community. And one thing that will be of interest to this community, we're working on the plant results right now, but some of the micronutrients, sodium, calcium, and potassium, had a strong impact on the plant community. And uh, so there may be ways to control or to shift the outcome of uh, prairie projects by uh, different kinds of soil amendments if you want more of one species or more of another. And uh, we should have a, a paper written about that uh, by this time next year. And there's been studies of experimental evolution with sunflowers, experiments of dune plants. So there's a lot of different research activity going on. My lab is interested in the herbivores that are eating the plants. And we also have put a little bit of attention into some of the pollinators. And, and uh, we're curious whether our uh, nutrient amendments changed the pollinator community as well as they definitely changed the herbivore community. So we're looking into that. 
on main campus with help from, oh, oh, before I get to that, there's a lot of class groups from UH and from other academic institutions in the Houston metropolitan area that come to the Coastal Center. Either in the summer there are classes that are there for extended periods, multiple days. During the academic year, usually it's like a weekend or an afternoon field trip. So people come and go and uh, get exposed to both nature and uh, different techniques, both in ecological research but also in geology. The, the Earth and Atmospheric Sciences Department is a big user of the, the property. And we have a new program at UH in petroleum engineering, and there are operating oil wells on the property, and so we're hoping that it can be a resource for that um, program as well. On campus, thanks to help from Jaime and Lan Shen and others, we have a little bit of the coastal center, Shasta's Prairie. Um, it's uh, about a millionth of an acre, I can't remember. Um, maybe about the size, width of uh, this building and uh, one square foot, but we have plans to expand it. But anyway, we've got some signage saying, uh, you know, both that this is what Houston should look like and also that it's a, a, a introduction to the coastal center which uh, most of the students at campus never get to see because only a small fraction get down to the Coastal Center during their academic career. Um, here's the main prairie, the part that's in the best condition. This is a winter shot, so it's kind of boring. Um, but we're looking from the north to the south, and you can see there is some forest coming in at the south and a lot on the the east side where all the buildings were historically and on the, the west. So a lot of trees have grown up over the years. In the summer, it looks a lot more interesting. And so we have a, a, a high quality and, and species rich prairie with a, you know, a couple hundred plant species that are easy to, relatively easy to find. Uh, the, on occasion, Native American seed has come and combined the various prairie sections or hand collected in order to get seeds and, and we've had a share cropping agreement with them so uh, we get a few hundred dollars here and there when they sell some of our seeds. They haven't done it recently, some over the past few years, one year it was too wet, another year the crops wasn't very good and right now the main prairie is being occupied by that experiment the nutrient experiment I told you about, so we told them not to come, but probably in the future this could happen again. Our main management is mowing, and there's our mower and, and uh, um, doing the thing. We, we have burned on occasion. So this fire was now um, maybe five or six years ago, and the primary motivation um, actually was research rather than management. So uh, here's the main prairie and you can see the fire started up here and it's moving uh, south. Um, the, the impetus was all from a scientist who studies fires and uh, how do fires spread and what's sort of the physical mechanism by which fires work. So we uh, in the US have tremendous property losses every year from wildfires and people want to understand them better to be able to predict and control them better. And so this was a fire that was well instrumented and measured and, and uh, we were able to see um, how, get some data from it. Uh, before that, there were a couple occasions over the past 20 years where this prairie and a couple other small bits of the prairie on the property were burned, but it never was a regular thing. All right, so here's where we are today. Uh, here's the main property again. There's about 90 acres in the middle, that main prairie that's in pretty good shape with a pretty low uh, percentage of uh, woody vegetation. Then you can see some other areas, they're still mostly uh, prairie, but have a lot of uh, modeling of, of uh, 
indication that there's a lot of woody vegetation moving in. And then, of course, there are places that are solid uh, forest at this point, mostly Chinese tallow. Uh, we've received funding from a donor to do a, a restoration of about 80 acres that's focused on these areas that are still mostly prairie but have vegeta uh, woody vegetation moving into it. And what happened, basically, these were areas that 10 years ago were in pretty good shape. Um, there were a couple years where it wasn't possible to mow, and the tallow got out, out of hand. And uh, now the tallow is too big to mow. And so we, we sort of lost control of them. So the plan is to go into these areas, um, do uh, some targeted herbiciding, hack and squirt, and then in some of the the areas where the tallow is a bit denser to do some mechanical mulching with the, the hydroax. And so we're looking forward to that. That'll be uh, uh, a big step forward in uh, pushing the tallow back and, and keeping the high quality prairie that we have. We uh, would like to do more. So our vision for a phase two would be another 80 acres or so. Uh, and that's what's in blue there. Most of that is solid tallow forest at this point. But the reason for targeting it is that it would connect almost all of the existing prairie into one big stand. And so it would really improve the ecological integrity of the prairie. It would reduce the seed rain from outside because you'd have less forest edge. And uh, so it would be a good thing all around. So uh, that'll be our next uh, sort of... Uh, goal in terms of uh, looking for donors or partners. And then, you know, ultimately, uh, next step might be more forest. You could imagine something like this, where uh, with a couple hundred acres more of forest controlled, we'd really have a big contiguous stand. And what we really like about this is we'd extend the prairie right up to the road front. So people driving by would see a prairie and we could have some big signage out there advertising the University of Houston and coastal prairies and so on. And of course, in the long run, why not do it all, right? So uh, we've got room for, for more. Um, um, what is left is, so here's the lab building, um, which is a small metal building. There's a couple, uh, there's a caretaker's building here. There's a couple foundations over here of what were um, train depots. And down here somewhere, there's the foundation of the movie theater. And that's about it. All the barracks were wooden buildings set on concrete blocks. And so when they were gone, they basically were gone. Uh, we've heard a little bit of discussion about wetlands. We're also interested in wetlands. We've received a grant from the National Science Foundation to do an experimental wetland facility. And this is kind of the vision for it. Here's the lab building. Here's where the caretakers, barn and, and home are. And so it would fill the space in between. Right now, we're thinking there'd be 12 ponds rather than 16, about 20 meters, so um, 60 feet in diameter. And these would be. Um, shallow ponds that could be set up either as shallow ponds or as wetlands or if you'd emptied them as a, a wet prairie and they'd be uh, experimental units that people could do research with. So that hopefully will be in place by next summer. Um, if we accomplish all these things we're going to also have new challenges so more prairie means more maintenance. We're going to need to figure out a way to expand our mowing capacity, and or um, really institute a regular burn regime. And we've um, just in the last uh, few days made some progress towards at least getting an initial burn arranged for this coming year. So we're excited about that. And uh, hopefully going forward, we can have fire be a regular part of the maintenance regime. Uh, like uh, probably many of you, we have challenges raising uh, funds to pay the bills. And so 
uh, we're thinking of different opportunities. One opportunity has been maybe there are ways to um, have some commercial use of the property. Uh, before you freak out too much, I'll let me explain the uh, options here. And uh, some of them are not so bad. So uh, this is my preferred option. This area here on the west northwest corner of the property was mostly used by the military in Camp Wallace days as a parking lot. So the military dumped a foot or two of oyster shell there, uh, which of course remains. The vegetation is not very native. There's a high percentage, 30 or 40 percent of the vegetation is exotic species as a consequence of all that oyster shell. And it's changed the soil chemistry. It changes the way the soil drains and so on. So that area, without too much work, could be a parking lot again. There apparently are people who ship things in and out of the Port of Houston and who need staging areas. And so maybe we could put a fence around part of this. People could drive in here and use it as a parking lot. And maybe that could help us pay the day-to-day -day bills. Uh, we've also talked about flood control. We're near the uh, Highland Bayou down here. Um, and uh, this area at the south end of the property is fairly disturbed. Maybe there's a possibility for some larger ponds there that uh, could both be uh, uh, detention, have some function as detention that somebody would pay for um, because they could be doing, providing that uh, uh, requirement but not on their own property. And uh, maybe they could also serve as natural areas or as uh, experimental units for research. Sort of the least desirable option, I think, is um, something along 2004. That would probably be the most profitable because it's uh, where people like to build strip malls and things like that. But that would be a permanent loss of the property in terms of any hope of doing uh, restoration or, or uh, research with it. So it's not what we want to do, um, but we do have to pay our bills somehow. Um, circling back sort of to where we fit in the constellation of all these organizations that are interested in prairies, the, the unique thing again about the Coastal Center is that we're run by a university. So we have a prairie. It's not all that big compared to a lot of your sites, but it is pretty high quality, high diversity. But we also have the academic scientists and, and uh, undergraduate and graduate students. So it's a great place to do experiments. We uh, envision experiments on how to do restoration better, how to do maintenance better, how to propagate prairie plants, better understand prairie plant ecology, better understand pollinator ecology. Um, we can allow field courses for graduate students, undergraduates, K-12, the general public, and so on. Uh, so there's a lot of opportunities for education coupled to the research. My own uh, research expertise is much more in wetlands than in prairie. And so I've been to meetings like this where people are restoring salt marshes or mangroves. And the, the um, talks are very similar. So um, it's uh, somebody says, we had this project. We did what we thought was the best approach to the project. And you know we followed it for a few years. And here's, here's what worked, and here's what didn't. And um, you know next time we do a project, we'll, we'll change our approach a little bit. So this is kind of a trial and error. Or if you really want to be nice, you could call it adaptive management. Um, <laughs> But it's the slowest possible way to improve the state of the art. Right? It's, it's you, every five or 10 years, you learn something. And you incrementally make your projects better. So what would be a lot faster, but is almost never done, is if when you did a project, you had 10 approaches, and you did it as an experiment. And people don't do that for a variety of reasons, and I understand that. But that, that's the kind of thing we could do at the Coastal Center because uh, the, the things that stop you from doing that at uh, your sites, we won't stop us at our site. 
And uh, so, you know, in a couple of years, we can try 10 different things, figure out which one is better, move forward, and advance the state of the knowledge a lot more quickly. That's the hope, anyway. And uh, because we're academics who like writing papers and stuff, we'll publish the results. The knowledge will not end up in somebody's grave along with them, but will uh, will be out there in the scientific literature. So hopefully, will be preserved. So we are very eager um, to partner with you guys. Um, we need your help to better restore and maintain our property because. I'm not an expert in, in prairies. All of you know more about them than I do. Um, but maybe we can help you by, um, by doing some science that will help your practices. And uh, unfortunately, I have to run now, but um, it's easy to find me um, on the Internet. So uh, I'm happy to, uh, to talk more with anybody who's got ideas for how we can collaborate. I will take questions if there are any questions.